Welcome, friends, to Boiler Room Detective Channel, where I share my knowledge and experience troubleshooting boiler issues. Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you find these videos helpful. Today, I'm discussing how a seven year old steam boiler started to leak. The brewery suddenly shuttered its doors, which shocked the employees. As a result, everything, including the boiler, was left just as it was. Nine months later, the new owners were assessing the equipment. The brewer walked into the boiler room, saw water on the floor, and called me. We found one source of the leak, a leaking pipe nipple, and valved it off. We got the boiler fired and closed the boiler outlet valve. When the boiler reached 11 psi, we shut it off and noticed the pressure dropping rapidly. Looking underneath the boiler, we saw several leaks coming from the tubes. How could the tubes be leaking? The boiler's only seven years old, I wondered. I knew they had a water treatment program before shutting down. Then I remembered what a friend of mine who's a water treatment expert told me. He said that when the water heats to 212 degrees, most of the oxygen molecules are driven from the water. When the boiler shuts off and the water cools, the water reabsorbs the oxygen molecules. The oxygen molecules start munching on the metal inside the boiler. Well, they had nine months to munch on it with no water treatment, and apparently they have eaten through the tube. If the boiler will be idle for more than a month, it suggested that it be laid up properly. The layup procedure extends the boiler's life and prevents corrosion when it's idle for an extended time. There are two choices when laying up a boiler, a wet layup or a dry layup. Before starting a boiler layup, the idle boiler should be locked out and tagged out of the system. This includes closing and securing the fuel valves. Consult the boiler manufacturers for their recommendations for layup. It's a good idea to have extra gaskets for the boiler prior to doing your shutdown. A dry layup is recommended for steel steam boilers, especially in areas where the idle boiler may be exposed to sub-freezing temperatures. It requires less monitoring than the wet layup method. As the name implies, the dry layup is when you drain all the water from the boiler. The boiler is dried using fans and heaters. It is either left open if the boiler room is not very humid or closed if it is humid. If closed, a moisture-absorbing material such as silica gel or lime is stored inside the boiler to absorb any moisture. The wet layup is suggested for cast iron boilers, both hydronic and steam, and steel hydronic boilers. The wet layup is when the boiler is filled with water. An oxygen scavenger chemical is introduced to the boiler water to absorb any oxygen in the water. The alkalinity is usually maintained at 400 parts per million or greater to prevent corrosion. The water should be circulated occasionally to prevent stratification of the chemicals. If doing a wet layup, don't forget to seal the flue so cold air doesn't drop down and freeze the water in the boiler. To understand how the leaks happened on this boiler, consider this. Dissolved oxygen is 10 times more corrosive than CO2 or carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a byproduct of steam and forms carbonic acid when mixed with water. Oxygen corrosion is twice as corrosive at 86 degrees Fahrenheit than at 122 degrees. The water laid in the boiler for nine months without any chemicals. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com is focused on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is fireice.com. It's my company's website and shows some of our capabilities. I've authored 12 boiler books and they're available on Amazon. My technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective. 
and I'll see you on the following case.